Hey guys, AV Songbird here. I think this is weight loss vlog 13. I think. Unlucky 13, right? Unlucky? Yeah. I never really bought into the whole unlucky 13 thing. You know, it's a number. <laughs> but um, I did weigh myself this morning, and according to the scale, I weigh the same. You know, I maintained. But um, I know how it goes because I've... I've watched my weight off and on throughout the course of my life, you know, and I get to the point where the weight stays the same on the scale, the lying ass scale, and you can feel the changes in the way that your clothes fit and everything. And through my stomach, no, I'm not moving my camera, you guys, all you guys that were hoping stand up and spin around for us, you know, show us you've been losing weight, you liar. No, really, I am losing weight. And when I become an after picture of myself, then I'll get up and dance around. Maybe I'll even put on the music. But for now, no, it's just me sitting here. But I can feel it through, especially through my stomach, where my stomach is starting to tighten up, my back's tightening up, my backside and my legs are tightening up and I can feel, you know, the difference, especially in the way that my jeans fit and the way that now shirts that were tight on me like this one, you know, this one was never tight on me. I love this shirt for the color, but this shirt especially is kind of hanging on me now. Well, I'm not going to stand up, but this shirt is really hanging on me now. Look, you can't even tell I really have a shape in this shirt. But it's really hanging on me now. You know, I'm going to have to go down another shirt size. So I'm excited. But um, usually, you know, when the number stays the same and my clothes start getting looser, it means that it's shifting around and the, you know, fat's changing into muscle. And, you know, my body's compacting itself. So here in another week or so, all of a sudden my weight's going to jump. You know, um... I upgraded on my Fitbit because they give you the goal, you know, stepwise and mile wise every day. So I upgraded that to, um, 10 miles a day, which is 25,000 steps for me. Cause I'm short. I'm only five, three. So 10 miles is 25,000 steps in my stride. But people are saying, you know, no, that's too ambitious. My husband worried that it was too ambitious. But when I told him, well, you know, I was doing 10 miles on the treadmill a day, at least five days a week before, and I was pushing to make sure I did that because I want to lose the weight and I want to get back to where I can run for two hours a day without stopping. I want to get in that kind of shape, you know, because I'm in my early thirties, you know, I'm starting to get older and I want to be in the kind of physical shape where for the rest of my life, I can enjoy my life and I don't feel limited by my weight and I'm, you know, it's not something in my way. And I figure if I waited any later than I already did, it would be harder to get in the kind of shape that I would like to be in for me, for my family, friends, you know, because if you take care of yourself and get in the kind of shape where you feel comfortable and you feel like you can do the things you need to do, then you can take better care of your family and take better care of your friends. And you know, it snowballs, but my clothes are really hanging on me now. So I get to do that one thing that no one who's trying to lose weight wants to do. I have to go clothes shopping and I'm going to have to get clothes that actually fit, you know, because I have the jeans now, but now that my shirts are hanging, my hubby kind of has mentioned, Hey, your shirts don't fit anymore. You know, which is hilarious because I go back through old clothes in my closet and I'm not one of those girls that runs out and buys a new wardrobe every season. You know, I'm jeans and t-shirts and I'm, eh, as long as the jeans fit and they're not in five million tatters, I'm cool. You know, and I love t-shirts. I have all my favorite t-shirts. So it's one of those, I'll still keep them. They just may become night shirts now because I can't wear them out in public and look like, you know, a ragamuffin. But the clothes are starting to get looser now, so I'm excited. And especially with the holidays here, because I don't know about you guys, but with me on a diet, I'm still cheating now and then because you have to. And I'm sorry it's rambly. You guys know me. I ramble. It happens. It's me. But um, I've been craving fudge like crazy. And now going into the holidays, everyone's mentioning fudge and brownies and 
Oh my God. For the last month and a half, I have had the worst craving for gingerbread. You know, soft, warm, right out of the oven gingerbread. You know, and the funny thing is I'm on this diet. I'm not calling it a diet. It's a lifestyle change. I'm not on like a binge or fat or whatever. But I still, you know, it's not cheating. It's, hey, I have the goodies still and I do, you know, the different things, but I just keep better track of, okay, I can have a dessert, but I can't go overboard. I can have a slice of cake. I don't want the whole thing, you know? I've never been a fan of, you know, like the fad diets or the binging or the I want to be honest with you guys for a minute about something, and it's not an easy thing to admit. You guys know I'm always honest with you. You know, if I get on camera and talk about, like, the weight loss or what I'm doing to try to improve myself as a person and it's easy, then I'm not being honest enough. It's supposed to be a little hard because I'm being honest with you guys, you know, and being open about myself as a person is hard for me because I've always been kind of a, you know, closed, kept up kind of person. You know, and when things bother me, I kind of keep it to myself. I take care of everyone else. But, um, I was a skinny kid. I'm going to have to go up to my mom's house and get some pictures of me when I was younger. I was a skinny kid. And I had, you know, some health problems growing up. I was really healthy, but I had a couple of health problems. And I got put on medications when I was in fourth grade. I think we were living in Texas at the time with my stepdad, but, um, I got put on medications and my weight jumped and I stayed on those medications all the way through high school. And then I woke up and, you know, being a teenage girl, I was sitting there and I was always the fat friend, you know, I wasn't huge, I was chunky, but I hated the stigma of being the fat friend, you know, and all my friends are going to go, oh, no, you weren't, you know, don't worry about it, you're beautiful, I have awesome friends, and I did in high school, a couple of them, you know, but the stigma of being the chunky girl when you're a girl in high school, you know, you want people to look at you and think you're attractive. You don't want to be the outsider in high school that's chunky. It's hard enough to fit in in high school, you know, and we all have, you know, our hangups and things we don't like about ourselves. And I got so tired of being heavy. I took myself off of medications without telling my parents and I bought a treadmill and I hopped up there and I started, you know, training myself to get into the running because, you know, the limitation was kind of physical, you know, it, okay, I'm going to say it. I had asthma. Okay. It, so you guys don't think it's any kind of a major deal, you know, and you know, being on all the steroid inhalers and being on all the different things and no, I'm not on steroids guys. I'm not, but I was a skinny kid and they had me on so many different types of medications. And I don't know if it was the medications or what it was. All I know is all of a sudden I started packing on weight, you know, from then on. And I was heavy till high school. And I went into 10th grade and I was so tired of being heavy, you know, and the pressure of wanting to feel beautiful and the pressure of wanting to feel like you fit in, like you're like everyone else in high school, you know, look wise, I took myself off of medications that looking back, it might not have been safe. I really could have hurt myself going off of them. And I bought a treadmill and I didn't tell my parents I took myself off of the medications and I hopped on that treadmill every single night and I forced myself, I put on a movie, you know, usually Lord of the Rings because I love that movie, you know, and it's one of those you sit and watch it and feel lazy so you want to get up and run. So I'd put that one on and I'd walk every single day or I'd put on a CD 
and I pushed myself purposely harder and harder every day and I got to the point where I could get up on that treadmill you know having asthma and being off the meds I should have still been on I hopped up there and it was hard at first you know I would go for a little bit and end up having an asthma attack or coming to the edge of an asthma attack but I pushed myself and got to where I could go farther faster you know before the attack hit and the one thing that made me feel better about it was the fact that I went into it not being stupid I've never been stupid it was one of the things I've always been grateful for you know having a good head on my shoulders my mom was in the medical field you know so I wasn't stupid I wasn't running at home by myself I don't want you guys to think I was trying to hurt myself I wasn't I was you know if I ran myself to the point at the edge of an attack I knew if anything serious ever went wrong my mom was there and she you know would be able to help me get through it and everything growing up having asthma attacks the way I did my mom always knew what to do and she would help me you know to get through it but um I started dropping weight but I wasn't happy with how fast I was dropping weight even with the running and my lungs were getting better and stronger because I was conditioning them basically and I got to the point where I wasn't having attacks like I used to and to this day I'm still off the meds you know because I've pushed past it I don't have the asthma anymore I can run now but um, I wasn't losing weight the way I wanted to and again didn't tell anyone else I cut way back on how much I was eating and you know when I was hungry I was eating ice chips and I was skipping meals and you know chewing gum and sucking on mints to tell myself I was eating and telling my mom I was eating more than I actually was so she wouldn't worry about me you know I never got down skeletal thin you know the smallest I ever got I was still decent size you know but looking back remembering wearing jeans and a coat all the time and still feeling like I was freezing to death looking in back and remembering you know skipping meals and being hungry and my mom will deny it because I didn't talk to her about it I didn't tell anyone about it I became so obsessed back then with wanting to be thin wanting to look better wanting to look like the other girls wanting to fit in you know and looking back it could have ended up being a much more dangerous situation than it was you know I kept up the running I was running two hours every night and I got to the point I was working out doing Tai Bo twice in a row every morning I was roller skating I was skipping meals I was being very unhealthy about the way I was going about it you know and I thought I was doing the right thing back then because hey guys started looking at me I started getting attention I actually did get asked out to dances and out to do things and it could have been a much more dangerous situation than it was and I'm sorry this video is running longer today you guys but I wanted to admit to something I never admitted before and everyone wants to be accepted on some level and we're in a society people want to fit in they want to be accepted they want to feel good about themselves and there's so much pressure to hold yourself up to these standards of being perfect and there's people out there who are going through like what I did in high school who are thinking you know that there's something wrong with them because they're not you know like the girls on the cover of the magazines or the guys on the cover of the magazines and the truth is those people aren't even like that you guys they airbrush magazine covers look it up it's everywhere 
No one out there, no matter how much they may think it, is perfect. Everyone's got one thing about themselves physically or, you know, mentally that they hate. You could take the most beautiful people in the world, you know, and they'll have one problem. I hate my baby toe or I hate my ears or everyone's got their hang up about themselves that makes them self-conscious. They just may not admit it you know, and skipping meals or eating the ice chips or working yourself to the point of exhaustion or taking yourself off of medicines that are meant to help you, you know, don't put your health at risk just because you feel you're not good enough because I'm going to cuss. It's bullshit. You know, all these diets and people that tell you you're not thin enough, you're not heavy enough, your boobs aren't big enough, your ass isn't firm enough. Screw those ideals, you guys. Anyone who watches this, there's nothing wrong with you. You are the way you are and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, yeah, now I'm, this is a weight loss vlog. Remember of the weight loss vlogs? But the thing is, the way I'm doing things now, yeah, I'm still off the asthma medication. Thank God I never ended up in the hospital for what I did. You know, because if I'd had a serious attack, I could have wound up in the hospital. But older, wiser now, you know, I'm watching what I eat. I'm being healthier. Fruits and veggies, no sugars, less alcohol, you know. Running because it's what I love to do. Looking back, yeah, maybe it was kind of an eating disorder. It was definitely a body image disorder, you know? And if me talking about it and actually admitting it publicly can help someone to go, oh my God, you know? If there's any of you that are going through it or considering it and you need someone to talk to, if you don't have anyone else in your life to talk to, I'm here. You know, and yeah, I'm kind of tearing up a bit because it was not an easy thing to admit, you know. I didn't even tell my mom I was freaking hungry. <laughs> you know, and I was eating, you know, meals here and there. I was eating dinner every day with my family. You know, so it's not like I was completely not eating, you know. I was never stupid. I have nurses all through my family and then my mom was in medical care. <laughs> you know, for work. So I knew, you know, if I stopped eating entirely, I knew all too well, you know, the stages of starvation and what your body will do. And I didn't want my hair falling out and I didn't want my body, you know, my organs going through shutdown. And I wasn't about to do that. So I did eat. I just didn't eat as much as I should have. But if me coming out and scaring myself and admitting that I had these problems and the things I went through helps someone, then it's my job to do that, to make sure that I can help someone else to not go through that. Because, guys, you're going to get through high school, guys, it's bullshit. You know, thinking you're too heavy, thinking that you have to gain weight or lose weight to be accepted. It's bullshit. Thinking that you have to go and have surgeries to look cookie cut or beautiful is bullshit. Thinking that there is anything wrong with you and that you're not good enough as you are is absolute horseshit. You know, if your nose is imperfect, if your eyes aren't perfectly symmetrical, if your ears are a little bigger than you'd like, there's nothing wrong with it. They're unique. They make you you. And yeah, this is a rambly vlog, you know, on my weight loss vlog, but I just admitted to something I've never admitted to before publicly. You know, I didn't, I talked to my husband a little about it, you know, because he knows things about me no one else does. But... I'm partly putting out these vlogs because I want the feeling of camaraderie. And if there's people out there that are going through this, I want them to be able to know they're not alone. That I'm doing it too. You know, and 
Because being alone with something, you're more prone to hide it. And if you're skipping meals and not telling anyone, if you're, you know, hurting yourself and not telling anyone, you're going to keep this secret and secrets snowball and you may seriously hurt yourself. And it's not frigging worth it to look someone else's idea of cookie cutter perfect. Screw them, you know? But yeah, longer video today, you guys. I'm sorry, but I wanted to be honest with you guys and I really wanted to get that off my chest and out there so I could let it go because when you vent things like that, you can let it go and just relax after, you know, but my stepsons are going to be here shortly and it's only five o'clock and it's already dark here, friggin' winter. I'm kidding. I love winter. It's all about the sweaters. But I'm going to let you guys go in case they show up early. This has been A.V. Songbird, my weight loss log. You guys have an awesome weekend. I'll see you back here Tuesday. If there's any of you that want to talk about eating disorders with me in private, you know, contact me on my Twitter. I've got my direct messages open. We can talk. Um, if any of you want to talk and share your story just to get it out there and vent and, you know, feel free, you guys. I'm here to help you guys. But again, A.V. Songbird, you guys have an awesome weekend. Bye, guys.